find out about what's going on here when they walk in the door, what their perception is, or how they how they get oriented. Um, in order to effectively serve people, mm -hmm. um, in order to, I mean, we've 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 had people um, just wandering in the building, and nobody okay. knows that they're why they're here. Or, I mean, it's just we because we're next to Salvo. That is also mm -hmm. one more reason why we need to make sure that if somebody's coming here, that we know they that they're getting the help they need. Mm -hmm. But also, we, we need to have some boundaries. We can't let every person mm -hmm. in the city bring a guest. Mm -hmm. we, we, can have a, um, we can have events where, and we will be having events where we're open to the public, where people will, we will be open to public, mm -hmm. the public of any age. We will, we will do things more thoughtfully and consciously. Mm -hmm. we are not, we're not trying to create um, you know animosity or boundaries but our, our funding is scarce and mm -hmm. we do have to prioritize it for the purpose and we have to prioritize the use of this building for the mm -hmm. purpose that it was meant like community block grant funding i called and found out that um you know that we were actually in violation of a lot of things that were required to get the funding to build this building mm -hmm. so um, if we were using this building and renting it to the community and, the, and a lot of the rentals weren't to serve seniors, mm -hmm. then we are not using this building the way it was meant to be mm -hmm. used. Mm -hmm. So I've realigned our policy so that it is all focused towards the mission of this agency. Mm -hmm. So senior groups who want to use this building, whether we're open or closed, do not pay rent. They are served by the city. Um, people who are not who are in groups who are not seniors pay pay a little bit of rent, but if they're from Northampton, they pay a lower rate. If they're a nonprofit, they pay a lower rate. If they're if they are not for if they're a for profit, they pay a higher rate. We are if you look at Forbes policies, it's the same. The schools policies are the same, so that everything we do aligns with the, our purpose and our mission. Um, so it's really important um, that we not make money off of this building just to make money. Mm -hmm. That's the, I mean, I'm just sort of, yeah. Yeah. all of those things, and it's hard to say, you know, sorry, but, you, but really you have to be a senior to, to come here and use our programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Can yeah, yeah. So it feels like, I, I can't believe I'm talking, I've never talked That's about okay. <laughs> but, uh, no, but, we uh, want you to talk. It feels, yeah. it feels to me like the issue, what's at issue is the definition of serving. You know, like, so Patty and Peggy and Bonnie take an exercise class and they meet and have coffee after it every Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. But Peggy's granddaughter's in town and she so wants them to meet everybody can she have a cup of coffee? You know, like, sh she's not being served. You're right. serving the, the, mm -hmm. the, the three people, and that actually is part of the services. The services community, the services, mm -hmm. their exercise class. So it feels to me like what is serving, you know, like, because having a, having like a, having a place to sit down and talk to friends and introduce them to your grandchild or whoever right, but, but feels to me like it, it's part of the mission. Yes, but there are lots of places where you can do that that aren't here, and I think that we can have days where we do bring your grandchild, bring your <clears throat> bring your family. We can have events that are specifically for that, but we can't do that every day all the time. Because basically what I'm finding is you know, I'm finding uh, people and their daughter in the computer room, people trying to bring their, you know, their daughter to an event, and we first and foremost need to serve seniors, and we're, we're going to develop programming to meet those needs, but we can't do, we can't be everything for every reason. And you'll see in most senior centers that is not something that is part of the everyday program. It's not, it's just not possible. So, excuse me, so some of the classes we have here, like I just came from my Tai Chi class, and I know that 
I have a sense that I think most everybody's over 60 in it, but there's another class afterwards, and I know that somebody isn't 60 in that class, so they shouldn't even be here. Well, that's what you're saying. If they're over 55. 55. Right. Okay, she might not even be over 55. Right, right. but we, like, we had like a 48-year-old apply for membership, mm -hmm. and they yeah, had to right. call them and say, sorry, but you have to right. wait until you're a senior, because yeah, all the know. seniors in this city, mm -hmm. this okay. is what we're here mm -hmm. for. Okay. Um, you know, I had a gentleman say, you know, so I, I want to play pool with my friend, but he's he's not even 55. And I said, well, there's lots of places you can play pool, and I'm sorry this is not one of them, but as soon as he turns 55, then he can come here. So, okay. Um, and well, I think that should be, uh, that should also make sure that it's really publicized as such, because I don't think people are in that yeah. understand. No, I think things have been very, very loose here, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, um, I think it's stretching our capacity. I think mm -hmm. it's it's overstressing the staff. I think it's um, I think that it, it affects the culture. It affects people's experience here. It's not always a positive thing. Um, you know, um, we do have to have some rules because we we will have lots and lots of people pushing the boundaries. Oh, yeah. oh, I and I would just. Piggyback um, that it, it appears that it's, um, when you know when we you know, take took over and Ken is relatively new, there's the past how things were either oh, no, just funny. developed or happened or nobody addressed and you know it's that slippery slope of um, the senior center becoming a community center becoming oh. a place for grandchildren and grandparents because you know and so the other piggyback thing I mean there is the mission but it relates to the law mm -hmm. and so chapter 40 of the general laws how the funding is borrowed how they get the funding how the administrative code works hmm. how the executive well, office of elder affairs yeah. works is there's actually legal liabilities and as board members I encourage you to speak to the people that you see as I did in the gym mm -hmm. there was a young girl I mean if she was in her 20s I'd be surprised and she decided to get on a machine while she was the aide to a man who was using the machine oh, oh. and it took me a while but I went up to her and I explained to her that she had to be 55 and a doctor's Mm -hmm. Note mm -hmm. because of insurance prices, right. and that's the purpose. Well, she has now, to have signed a waiver to use mm -hmm. the gym, right? And, 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 and you know, remember, it, it, she'll never do it again, you no, know. I'm but sure. it's, it, I knew I had to speak to her because I was mm -hmm. on the board. So mm -hmm. I encourage you, being board members, <coughs> to you know, find a gentle way to speak oh, yeah. to people, okay. and you know, that we, we, you know, we need to notice those things and we can help. And so you're saying she was here legitimately. She was here she as an aide. She, she, she was here as an aide, but yeah. she got on, yeah. you know, two I machines. Said. I, I, one machine, and then she, and she had her back to the person that right. she was supposed to be the aide paying attention. So there was a couple yeah. of things going on. Right. Right. So I had to speak up. Go ahead, Sam. Um, this is a great discussion, and my suggestion would be for our October meeting, we mm -hmm. put this on the on the okay. agenda okay. that we have a thorough. So we're not just this is an offshoot mm -hmm. of discussion about bylaws that we understand mm -hmm. what Marie was trying to help us. Mm -hmm. the, the funding sources, you know, for some of us is part of the orientation. Mm -hmm. What are the funding sources? What are the implications? Mm -hmm. All the stuff that you're, the, the things that you're unraveling. So we have a full understanding of mm -hmm. not only what we're doing, but why mm -hmm. we have to do it and why we can't do it. It would be just mm -hmm. helpful to have it as a yeah. dedicated discussion. Yeah, and I just, I want to make sure that people know, I mean, I, I you probably can hear a little frustration in my voice, but um, <laughs> I, I, I want to serve everyone. I don't like to be the one who has to say I'm sorry, but no. Um, and but I think there is room to serve all seniors mm -hmm. with the kinds of things that build community and bring in family. I think we have to do it the right way. Um, and I very want deliberate about it. And I want us to be yes. I want us to be deliberate about it. And, and like Kim and I met with the rec department yesterday, and we talked about these things. I've talked to Forbes about it. I'm talking to the Y about it. These are all conversations that are happening. But because things have been so loose here, that's why we need to revisit the bylaws. That's why you know that's why we're looking at everything so closely, because we also have to protect what our mission is because then we do our best. Mm -hmm. we, we come, if we come from the lens of serving seniors 
first and foremost, we will do a better job. Um, so. Okay, so let's move on to, um, actually, are we still in the bylaw? I had a question for those. Yes. The, um, the update to the terms, I'm pulling it out, number. Is it, and maybe you check this out, I'm under section four, where it says that members can only serve two terms. Right. Are, is that within the authority of our bylaws? I mean, the appointing yes. authority is the mayor. No, but the executive office of, of the Elder Affairs makes recommendations, and it's actually a city policy that the mayor has, uh, has um, endorsed, or whatever word you use, is um, you can only be on one committee at the city at a time. You can't be on multiple committees. And that because he wants volunteers to have a chance to do that, um, so that the after two terms you can rotate off and then you can come back on. Most senior <coughs> centers actually have such a rule as that. That would be and, great to have as part of our discussion about mm -hmm. the process and stuff because it's yeah. there's some stuff in here that it's you know it seems like it might be in conflict. Apparently it's not. It would be great to right. have that part of the whole and process. It's part of the recommendation. We've well, always had that policy uh, of two years. It's been yeah. in the bylaws from the start. Well, but, we didn't, no, but we didn't no. do it. Was because, no. Like the herd, I think, was 10 years. I was. No, I've been involved all the time. Nobody's ever enforced it. Yeah, so we never. I'm not, I'm not against it. I just want to understand. No, no, no. no I, I'm t I, totally, I, I totally get it. Mm -hmm. But it's the mayor's policy. And in fact, yes, it can be in our bylaws. But I understand that if the mayor appoints the people. but. The, the appointments so, be great mayor's copy the mayor's policies. so if they rotate yeah, off like that. Yeah. so we, mm -hmm. can yeah. we get copies of the mayor's policies like that that may affect us that we're not aware of mm -hmm. yeah i just happened yeah. to contact the mayor's office yeah. as a board uh, as as a council member I'm trying to get away from board right. we're not a board of directors right and so i checked yeah. with the person in his office because i had some questions about that and that was that was the answer i got from the mayor's aide so it's, it's, practice. It's, not, it's, the, it's this current mayor's practice is what it sounds like. It's not mm -hmm. a law. Right. It's not a law, but we can yeah. put it in our bylaws. Mm -hmm. And then it is a law for us, Yeah. <laughs> so to speak. But I know what you're saying yeah. is if a mayor gets elected and they want to put And the next mayor times, mm -hmm. doesn't have right. that practice, right. then mm -hmm. our bylaws may yeah. might be valid. Well, he would be in violation of the bylaws, even though he's the appointing authority. But if there isn't a vacancy, I mean, then you well, get if into they, if they change. If they change their guidelines, then we should. Right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think the appointing right. authority should receive their bylaws. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, right. Uh, I take it, uh, I don't know if this has been discussed before, but I take it now we're now changing the board of directors to council on aging. The term. Well, we have always been a council on aging. Right. In fact, right. in the law, yeah, there is no board. reference to a board of directors board. whatsoever, we are board other than in the yeah. bylaws. Yeah. So, so uh, you are we, we are appointed as yeah. a council member to the council on aging, not to be a board. Well, I like that better because every time I tell somebody I'm on the board of directors, they say, "Well, you're in charge now. I want this done," and I have yeah. to remind yeah. them we're not in charge. No, no. Marie's in charge. We're advising her. So, and that's all we're doing. But I think it was confusing in the past because even before Patty had us had us evaluate her, and we had no authority to evaluate that's right. her. As part of the city, we would pass a, a city evaluation to pass on to the mayor. Did he ask her? For she, that? the mayor. Did he she, ask the board for that? Yeah, I don't know if Claire did or not. I right. don't know who asked for it, but we did it. Uh, okay, Mike well, so in Williamsburg, the 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 select board would ask the board to to give some input right. mm -hmm. um, under on my evaluation. Yeah, that's what it was. It was more input. But yeah, except for town is different than the city. Yeah. And, so. and three of us were appointed to do that, and we right. did it for several years, and then stopped. Yep. For I'm, no reason. Well, another thing yeah. to find out about current yeah. practices, yeah. if that's what, exactly. what the current year. Right. I can I can ask him about mm -hmm. how. So we know all of those when things. I when I inquire about my evaluation. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, <laughs> high, on, high on your list. Right? <laughs> but technically, to answer your question, when you look at the at the you know Article One, the establishment, mm -hmm. we are established by the adoption of Chapter Forty mm -hmm. of the General Laws as a Council on Aging. Right. There is no reference in the statute yeah. or in the Administrative Code of the City. Uh, about being a board of directors, right, no, right, right. but arose by any other name. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. can say, 
do we sort of act like a board of directors would act in some places? Yes, but technically we yeah. just have to want to get away from we're not a board, we're a council on aging, and we are each council members. Well, see, in, the, in the past, the entire department was known as a council on aging, right. so That's we right. couldn't be it's all the council on aging because the whole department yeah. was a council. So, yeah, it's, Until it's, we it's a real pet name. name of mine. Um, and when the mayor changed yeah. the name, it is logical for us to go to Kia Council on Aging, except we should have been all along. Okay, we need well, to move so on. So I would say, to have yeah, hour. calling it an advisory board, oh, like the advisory, advisory group, would change it to group, the board. Council on Aging Advisory Board. Well, technically, that is not in conformance with Chapter 40. Okay, so just to so you can say on we're not, but if you look at Chapter well, 40, and I can say we are right. advisory. Yeah, right. that makes sense. Okay. And a lot of cities have this okay. true. Okay. The group is called the Council on Aging. And yes, are we more. advisory, but is that tech legally, uh, going back to, I'm a stickler for, I want to be in compliance with the law. Yeah. I know you'd be with mission. In my former work, it was always, anything I write can't be in violation of the law. Yeah, that makes or sense. Or in opposition. So that's why I, when I did it, it's, it's, it's technically precise in accordance to how we were established in 1960. And the city clerk, nobody seemed to know when. So I, call, I went to see Pam. And she goes, well, it's not in the administrative code. When it was all rewritten, she said, I'm going to have to go back to the vaults and the minutes and look for when did the city council vote, which was October 18, 1960. Wow. That's how long we've been here. I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two years, you know, I came along thought. two years later, almost to the day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, so can we go over, uh, go over to the uh, agenda and update on age-friendly, dementia-friendly initiative? Yeah. Do you want me to speak to that, or do why don't you want to start with the grant, and I'll where we are with the grant, and then I'll go to the other half. So I don't know where we are with the grant. I think Linda um, was going to check in with you about that. Yeah, <laughs> the Desmond. No, I'm not. I'm not involved in the grant piece at all. So okay. Well, so I think. I think we. I think we were going to um, submit the grant to the Tufts Health Foundation, mm -hmm. um, and it's it. It's being worked on a, by a subcommittee of people from the committee. So, um, and and Cindy and I have been talking about setting up the information session. So, separate from the grant is the age friendly process, mm -hmm. which is under the auspices of the ARP. And we had a small working group had hoped to have a meeting mm -hmm. in, in September next mm -hmm. week to to invite community partners and people who we hope will start mm -hmm. expanding. We've had to we're going to push that back until October. Um, once we have a date, we'll make sure everyone is aware of it. And the purpose of that meeting, which the mayor is going to host, is to really be more public about our intent to apply to become an age-friendly city and to really ex invite the people who are there to an informational session and invite them to become involved. We have two people. Um, the, person who's the age-friendly director for the therapy Massachusetts and another guy who is the director of the age health, healthy aging consortium mm -hmm. are both going to come out they've had a lot of experience and just be the resources for what other folks have done um, it turns out that the woman who is the staff person for the age-friendly work that's going on in Berkshire County which is pretty much a it's Pittsfield and a number of small communities is lives in Northampton. Mm -hmm. Commute. Um, and she also agreed to be in the room mm -hmm. okay. to help us as a resource when um, mm -hmm. so it's just really a chance to get more public and really start branching out mm -hmm. people throughout other parts of the city the government structure and as well as mm -hmm. our friends and neighbors um, who are representing mm -hmm. businesses, real estate, commercial, the whole the hospital, yeah. 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 right. Yeah. So stay tuned. We're moving forward. Then. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. Okay. Uh, can it, is it okay to still get some privilege? So um, I heard it's waiting it's due September 20th. So it's will is there being something submitted for September 20th? The grant. Um, yeah, or Linda was just telling. I'm not involved in the grant, so I can't. Well, so she hasn't told me. Linda so, Desmond. Yeah, I'm not involved. Uh, and. and I well, think a couple other people. Well, I was working, but I haven't heard from her lately. Well, then, so maybe so. We, I can update you on what Linda said after the meeting. I can sure. Share. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so the next thing is Highland Valley Elder Services. Well, but I'm just going to, um, basically, I mean, things are moving along. Um, I just wanted to let, I think the main thing, just to let you know that um, there's going to be a, our, at our annual meeting, we're having a little open house at Hadley uh, Meeting House in the street. Everybody can come and there'll be vendors around and it's a, being able to go and talk to people about Highland Valley and that's what it's going to be and we'll, we'll, we'll get, there'll be invitations sent out and it's up to save the date. So it's going to be October 4th on a Thursday at Hadley Meeting House from 4 to 5.30. Keeps well. It's, mm -hmm. So it's a little different than what we used to do. And, um, and the purpose is? It's just more to kind of get for people wanting to come and understand Highland Valley better. What, who they are and what they do? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And some of the vendors are going to be there. Different departments in Highland Valley will have like little tables and stuff. Like so. information yeah. there. Mm -hmm. What were the hours again? Say again? What were the hours? 4 again? to 5.30. Don't come expecting supper, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. And Prime Russia are by the bridge, so expect that. Yeah. Oh, yes. God. Okay, yeah, thanks very that. much. So, new business. Highlight of expanded hours starting October 1st mm -hmm. and partnership with the YMCA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are, I may have read in the Chronicle that we are expanding hours in October. Um, and it will be a year-long pilot, and if it goes really well, um, we'll bring in a lot of people who are not able to access our programming during our open hour, you know, our current open hours um, in those evening and weekend hours. Um, that will show us that we, it's clearly a need. Um, mm -hmm. I think you know a lot of a lot more seniors are working later mm -hmm. and later in life, and so in order to serve that whole part of the population, it really is important for us to have some hours that suit their needs. Um, we've had a lot of requests for that, and I guess people have been waiting a long time for the fitness center to have more hours. So um, on Saturdays, um, this, what I'm calling the fitness wing will be open, <laughs> and um, the rest of the building will be closed except when the farmer's market opens, that part of the building will be open to the public mm -hmm. and this part of the building will only be open to seniors for the fitness center and there oh, will good. be classes going on as well as the gym being open. Um, mm -hmm. So there'll be somebody there to kind of check in and, and kind of be gatekeeper for people. Yes. Okay. Um, and then Tuesday and Thursday nights we'll be having lots of different kinds of programming going on. Um, so we're hoping to engage caregivers um, and um, working seniors and, and really be doing some programming that's um, so for people who um, are wanting to plan for retirement or okay. so it won't be like just um, uh, not just 55 and older so a lot of people who are over 55 are caregivers right um, right and you know I think that those those evening hours may have to be more flexible mm -hmm. um, I, I think that these okay. are these are definitely the nuances we need to clarify like I made a real point and I just sent you all the press release for the bistro grand opening mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to really look at the language we use so that um, it's clear because it was, I think there was, you know, the bistro was open to the public. Mm -hmm. So what would happen if the public fills up our bistro and then there's no seats for seniors? Like that would be, that would be really not good, right? So, so what I'm trying to say is we will sell to the public and, but it will be to go. And then we will have some special events where um, maybe it's a family event where we're going to serve food and you can bring your family or, um, we have a grandparent day and we have a special meal or we you know we that we're, we'll have specific things where we say we're open for for different age groups for this event um, so um, you know those those things have been not clear before and so I think we're gonna have to figure out how we do that and so I think I think what Kim and I were we're thinking about was that we, we need to sort of form some focus groups around some of this stuff um, because there, there was a lot of fear that this was going to become a community center and then I got here and I was like it already is it's 
Marine Community mm, Center. By default, it slid into that. Yeah, yeah, and so, um, but you know, I think I think there is room to do this stuff. So, um, and you know, I think that we will we will be serving the community by providing to-go meals. Um, there are a lot of local businesses that I'm already hearing are really excited because because it's a set menu and they don't have to all fig take an hour to figure out who wants what and then who's going to pick it up and all that so anyway I think um, that's a good thing and um, the YMCA we were doing a pilot where they are going to be offering um, classes here fitness classes so we're going to sort of be upping the ante and the, and the caliber of fitness classes we're offering um, but open only to seniors open only to the seniors then right yeah. Okay. Great. Taught by their staff. Taught and by their staff yeah. with classes that are designed for seniors. Yeah. Well, the enhanced yeah. fitness be one of them? Do you know what? So enhanced fitness is um, one of the things we're working on. Dance and Sculpt is scheduled to start Tuesday, Thursday nights, which is Dance and Sculpt for the older adult. Um, there will be, um, let's see what else. Um, it's going to be a this beginner Zumba on Saturdays, yoga on Saturdays, um, but Enhanced Fitness, um, Live Strong, mm -hmm. and Health Smart are all things okay. we're looking at. And I just wrote a grant for um, to Blue, Pile, Blue Cross Blue Shield to actually do a year-long program with evidence-based programming that would incorporate um, cooking, fitness, and health counseling. Um, which is the Health Smart series. So that sounds wonderful. Um, with incentives, I'm hoping we, with incentives, free farm shares, all that kind of stuff. Where's so how strong program out of who's, who runs that? Lives uh, health, health Health Smart Health Smart Live Strong Health and Smart. smart. Mm -hmm. um, that's Sorry. that's an evidence evidence based mm -hmm. program that the Y has. Oh, it's a Y. It's no, not. Y. I, it's not What's theirs, the but they on? they have. They have taught it and they can yeah. teach it here. So oh, awesome. Um, Those two different ones, Live Strong and Health. Live Strong is for people who've had cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's, it's a different one. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so um, anyway, there's there are lots of different options, and I think. And the, the um, class that that person was interested in, is that part, remember the woman? The arthritis one. Yeah. That's the whole um, ceiling. Right, so we have Healthy Bones and Balance. That class is particular to those instructors that teach in Holyoke, and I, I'd be happy to offer that class here if those teachers want to teach it, okay. but unless someone wants to go learn their routine, I don't know how we would offer their program. If it's not a program that's taught nationally or something, so. Um, that that woman right. wanted that program, yeah. but yeah, I think yeah. Kathy and I talked about that. We might team up and just go see what it is. Sure. And uh, so. yeah, I mean, there's so many different kinds of things yeah. happening here, um, and there's room. Um, so and um, do we get still into staffing? Mm -hmm. I just yeah, to say that I think it makes a whole lot of sense to make the pilot a year yeah. and not do a couple of months, you know, to really, yeah. to really give it time. Through all the seasons. Through all the exactly yeah. seasons. Through all the seasons and crappy yeah, weather and not so crappy weather and all that. And really things take time to get kind of Yeah, and for the word to catch on, that it really yeah. is a fair pilot. Yeah. Well, what are you saying that for? About the why or just? It's a comment that I think it's about, yeah. the, about the expanded hours. Oh, the whole idea everything. of yeah. the plan is really a great one to make the pilot a year-long pilot. Not a so yeah, I mean we're not starting six with, weeks and you're done. Yeah, yeah, and we're starting with a f you know just a couple things. But there is a plan to to offer the enhanced fitness and to offer the um, live strong, and so we're just going to build on that. Um, and then you know if it goes really well, then we'll have to go out to bid and offer it. And, and it may be that we we still um, want what the Y has because no one else may be able to offer what the Y offers, but. Um, you know, I think I think that people will enjoy that. And then also, we have the Y is going to be taking over a class that's been here that people have been really um, dedicated to. That um, the instructor isn't here anymore. So, so um, you know, that'll be a nice thing too. Um, we used to have it. That's what the Y's going to be now. We used to have the kids business here. Uh huh. So one of the instructors. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. people. Oh, 
Okay, I have been the, um, the aging, uh, not a city. learning and aging no. here anymore. Okay. Someone told me that. Learning and retirement. Or learning and retirement. Is that? No, they're still here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Someone told me that they thought that was leaving here. No, learning and retirement will be here. Um, Maybe the academic year. I might only be here in the summer. So, I mean, that brings me to the rental policy thing. So, um, I will be like releasing the new policy, which um, sort of outlines that um, we're not renting during our open hours. We're reserving our space and our parking for our programming. Mm -hmm. We do have to provide space for the city. Okay. Um, so, there will be groups in the building that aren't seniors using space because they will be like the Board of Health is doing a training for all the police or mm -hmm. whatever. So, you know, but it will be clearer. It'll be clearer what's going on in the building and mm -hmm. and we will have parking, which has been a big complaint, sure. you know. Mm -hmm. um, people can't park to come to things that are for seniors because we're doing, we've been doing things mm -hmm. that weren't always just for seniors. So, but, but we will continue partnerships and encourage partnerships with groups that want us to, to do programming for seniors um, and they may pay something because they are charging a fee and I really struggle around this like I do really feel uncomfortable about outside groups coming in and making money off of our, our mm -hmm. constituents mm -hmm. but if we can't afford, like with Five College Learning, to take on their costs and offer their programming and then charge the fee we feel we should mm -hmm. charge, um, it makes sense to partner, let them charge a fee. We, we uh, provide financial aid. So I'm working on finan a financial aid fund next week. The city council will vote to take $3,000 from the gift fund to start a financial aid fund. And I, want to do some fundraising to bolster that mm -hmm. so that we can then have a system where people who cannot access programs that you have to pay a fee for can access them. So like five in the morning and then also like is Hampshire Coral moving out here then? Nope. They'll be here too. But those are but so we have I've been yeah, saying this maybe sounds a little crass, but I've been saying we have everything from cheese whiz to pate so <laughs> we will do it all like we have free stuff and we have really high-end stuff and that's Northampton I mean people come move here because of five college learning we, we want them here we want that kind of programming but we want to make sure that it's not just people with money who can go to that program and so mm -hmm. um, what I want to do is really create a system where people can say we can we say you can access this much financial aid per month um, so that you and you get to choose what you use it for um, you know if you want to if you want to spend it on the ten dollar Tai Chi classes we want you to do that we want you to be able to go to those you don't have to just go to free Tai Chi um, because because being poor doesn't mean you can't you shouldn't be able to to be more advanced fitness wise you know it just um, so I really want to make us be more inclusive and I want us to be putting money back into programming um, and not just focusing on making money. Um, so we will partner and um, in order to bring good programming. And um, if they're providing free programming, then we don't charge them rent. It just kind of makes sense that they're here, they're bene we're benefiting. I think we also ought to consider serious negotiation with programs like learning and retirement so that we say to them, you're welcome, we know you charge a fee, but you know, we really will be welcome to the extent that there's a sliding fee. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of these programs already have that and we listen mm -hmm. to it. I think that ought to be really a part of our consideration. And that way, the kinds of money as you're talking about can be used for other things yeah. rather than those particular programs. So, uh, and again, I, I know learning and retirement, I don't know all the programs you've mentioned, but a lot of them will say we have a sliding fee. So the, we did meet with them and talk about it and they, they aren't making, they have a lot of costs, mainly marketing, but then it got really confusing. Like there are some members 
who, I mean, they're actually charging our members more than their members to come in. So it's 15 for our people, it's 12 for theirs, mm -hmm. because they are paying to be members of Five College Living. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, um, you know, I really struggled with that. I felt like, uh, you know, I wanted them to not charge our people and to just charge their members because their members pay to be part of this yeah. service. And, you know, um, but there are, some of our members are their members. Mm -hmm. and, and so it just got too confusing and it got too hard to tease out. And so the, the best thing that I can come up with at this moment is that we're gonna make sure people know that we have financial aid. We're gonna make it um, so that people can access it. And I wanna make it so that it's not that you have to self-identify over and over and over again, but that mm -hmm. it's like when you apply to the Y, you are screened once, mm -hmm. your rate is set, you are then, you. that's what you pay. And I would like to have a punch card, is my goal, is that people then use that punch card for anything they want to go to. Um, and they don't have, they don't have to be, it doesn't, it's not like, you know, when you have a, a food bank card, you, nobody knows the difference. Everybody has a punch card. It's, you know, um, there's no stigma. Yeah. You can go to what you want and, <laughs> and I think that we are bringing in enough money through programming that we can have a sliding scale. So um, it seemed like that they weren't really able to do that. Um, so, you know, we'll have some kind of elite programming and some, you know, we'll have all levels. But, you know, we're looking at this with our cooking classes we'll be offering and art classes and all of that, that, um, you know, somebody, um, who's on food stamps and wants to learn how to deglaze, they should be able to do that. Um, so, um, you know, it's all like we, we all want, we want what we're interested in. So, so it would be a, basically a one time uh, screening. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. and then maybe a periodic once a year question. Have yeah, you if your income changes. Change and, yeah. Yeah, I think that, just yeah. like the Y does, I think you have to apply every year. Yeah. Um, and and that's, every, that's really where I want to go with it, yeah. That's a good idea, yeah. Because otherwise, if you're applying for every class, and you have to give this information out for every class and drive. I yeah, mean, it's I mean, too that's, much work for the staff. Uh, and, it's too much work for us, and, and it's no fun. To people. You know, yeah. it just it's like this is supposed to be an accessible yeah. place mm -hmm. for to serve everyone from all walks. Right. Um, Want to set up barriers. Barriers. No barriers. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Bar you know, just just you know, a, a gate you know, to uh -huh. get through the sur you know, get through that part, and then you use the services. Right. Yeah. Um, so, and then the fee structures uh, fits right in there too, and and so we've been doing an analysis of how we charge fees. They're all over the place. Some classes are two dollars, some are ten. Um, I'd like to make things a little bit more um, streamlined and um, and I think that it's going to take more time. Um, I also, you know, I don't want to make too many changes at once um, and I think, um, you know, I'm talking to people, I'm talking to the why, I'm talking to other senior centers about how they do it and what works um, and so, you know, right now um, we're just trying to kind of keep things the way they've been around that, but if we offer financially, that may um, make some other classes become more available to people who didn't feel like they were available to them. Um, so, other programming developments are, oh, well, the staffing. Um, so, um, you know, we, I think you all know that Janice Levy has left, and, and so we have this opening for program and media coordinator, and um, that was originally two positions that were combined, so I'm actually talking to the mayor about separating that back into two positions, um, and also looking at other staffing um, issues that we need to fill and, and trying to make some decisions based on what, you know, what I, is available to me in terms of um, the fiscal part of it. Um, Can I also ask, is, I mean, what what's going on with the custodian? So there is a custodian okay. coming on, yeah. Somebody who's dedicated to the senior center? No, just. Only the senior center, yes. Okay, great. Yeah, and um, 
and so and the scheduling will will probably be one to nine, which will mm -hmm. allow for a lot more cleaning oh, to happen. <laughs> and mowing, good start. And mowing and that all of be, that stuff. We're in desperate no. need of a mow. How about you, The DPW doesn't mow? Well, so no, they, they've been helping out, but they're, yeah. you know, they're overtaxed as well, yeah. so. Our custodian's um, always done that. Yeah, they, yeah, they will. Um, okay. So, and another thing is that we're starting, we're just starting a local trip program. Um, a lot of people can't afford to go on the, the further, you know, the mm -hmm. Bermuda or yeah. Mount Rushmore or whatever. A lot of people can't do this. So a lot of people don't have the stamina to do it also. Um, so, um, this was something that was really popular in Williamsburg. Um, I think, you know, there were, there were a lot, um, a lot more people up there with less income and, and I think also a lot less stamina, like with a lot of people who were legally blind or who um, just, you know, could only handle sort of a two to three hour outing. And so um, we're gonna start offering a trip uh, once a month and try to work our way up to adding more, but to people who are have stopped driving or homebound who really need that socialization and probably don't get to do a lot of those kinds of things in a social environment. Um, and we'll prioritize those people um, and um, encourage other people who want to go on these things to, to carpool, uh, to go along, but, wow. but that we'll prioritize the use of the van for that um, and really just get out and do some things that are, you know, leaf peeping and, you know, doing some of the stuff, the, the rich stuff that's available here in the valley, so. Um, and um, another recent development is that um, uh, the Young at Heart is coming back to use the space here to rehearse, and they're going to be opening the rehearsals for people to come listen. Oh. Um, and uh, in, rich, in you know, this, we're going to try this out, and so if it doesn't work out um, for for whatever reasons, um, that will be fine. But I think it's really a win-win. Um, they really want to recruit. Um, they want to be in a place that you know is is really positive and excited about them, and um, and they started out here. So yes, they did. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about that, and um, and then they they will be available to help us out a little bit too. So that will be a nice thing. Um, when you say people will come to listen, does that mean? Yeah. There'll be a restriction so that the people who've come can be 55 or older. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think that's well, well, how will we, we notify open the public of that? That's so we can't point. be open to the public. I mean, so so what Bob Selman said is, you know, we want people who can't afford to pay tickets to come see us to be able to come. Mm -hmm. Like an open rehearsal kind of thing? It's yeah. going to be an open rehearsal, but we're not open to the public. Right. And we're open to seniors we're to open this is this is for <laughs> seniors so um this is just to publicize that somehow but that's not a, a suggestion well we're not gonna we're not gonna publicize it yet because it is we're, we're doing sort of a pilot um we are it is going to be in the chronicle this month for october um that an article about their their anniversary and their event and that we're partnering with them around a coat and toy drive here as a site for people to donate um, for the immigrants from Puerto Rico. So, um, so we're going to start doing more together and um, they're going to come to lunch, the grand opening. Which was, which part is not being, I apologize. I well, was we're not going to publish the size that, that we're, that they're, they're holding open risk people rehearsals. People will start Flowing in if we say that oh, okay. open rehearsal for a young at heart, and they'll be like, "Oh, like, a free no, show." I'm sorry, it was being published. But the only thing I want to say, and maybe other people might feel the same way, is it was unclear to me. I thought it was when you announced it. I thought you were saying that is something that is going to be publicized, whether it was through us or through Young at Heart. I'm announcing it here, and then I'm, we're going to announce. We're going to word of mouth, and it. And, and gradually, depending on how it turns out, like if it's going to be more of a permanent thing, um, you know, it might become more public. But, um, you know, it, it's going to be happening while brown bag's going on, and Bob loved that idea. Like, um, you know, he may at some points need to say, this rehearsal's closed today, 
because we really have to focus mm -hmm. and you know we'll we'll you know mm -hmm. hopefully it won't happen a lot but um, and that people will have to be respectful and not be talking really loud during the rehearsal. <laughs> but um, but but the brown bag is going to be going on, and that a lot of people who can't afford to go to their shows will 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 be captive. You know, they'll be the audience. And um, also, he wants to recruit. He wants more diversity in his group. Mm -hmm. He. Um, he, you know, it's it's founded in those values of that it's really for seniors and it's to build culture and it should be for everyone. So, and he's also saying he's going to be giving a certain amount of tickets, free free tickets out for the show. So, because to be in the chorus, you have to be seventy or older. Seventy five. Seventy five. Yeah. Yeah. He said he wanted it to be eighty, but he couldn't get it. Right. <laughs> seventy five, able to sing. And able to sing or <laughs> so um, anyway there's a lot of a lot of things that'll be in the chronicle that you'll see but, but we're really bolstering the program so um, and we talked about the tax exemption um, and I guess maybe Kim if you want to um, just talk about the two the, the groups that we talked about for me. Sure, sure. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I just want to say hi. I think I've had an opportunity to meet most of you, but not all of you. Um, so my name is Kim Park, and I'm the new assistant director and volunteer coordinator. So pleasure to be working with you. Um, as Marie mentioned, we're looking at putting together two focus groups. Uh, one focus group to focus on programming and pro programming ideas. So um, if any one of you would like to join it, please let me know. We'll be uh, also asking some of our members. Uh, who may uh, have some interest in arts and culture and events that we can bring here uh, for members. So we really would like to get input not only from you, but our members uh, and begin to put together some new programming ideas. The second thing is, is really our policy and procedure. We talked a little bit about this earlier in the meeting, is really looking at some of the policies and procedures, including orientation uh, for volunteers, uh, as well as training, ongoing training for volunteers, um, not only just general training on policies and procedures for the senior center as a whole, but also for each individual role as well. So for reception, that would be a targeted training for the specific duties that they're helping to fill, uh, as well as coffee shop and some of the other positions. So really looking at policies and procedures, training and orientation, so that people have the tools that they need uh, to really be successful and have that be a win-win for everyone. So my tap here. Happy for that. I'm a volunteer. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, and part of that will also be, um, I think that we're trying to put together a structure for boards. The board too is that when new members come on, and I think, you know, I think right now, like Jerry, Anna, and I've been talking about, like that, because it's so so many new people um, that we wouldn't do that one on one. We would we might not even do it in a small group. We might just like do the, all together. We're going to review the, we're, as we're reviewing the bylaws and things like that, but also like start having staff come in and sort of kind of debrief you, like have the social worker come in and say, these are all the things that I'm working on and doing and you might not know about. It used about, to be that way. Yeah, we we used to always yeah. have a staff person. Right, so we're gonna start doing that again, but, but kind of, um, I wanted to encourage you all to like really read the Chronicle. Like I think that there's, still so much that's not in there that we're going to be working on getting in there like we don't have a resource page we don't have a lot on social services and so we're going to be looking at all that but so it'll give you a sense of what we are doing but it also will give you a sense of what maybe we also need to be including that we're not um, it might we might then be saying to you oh we actually do that it's just not in there <laughs> but we're really looking at how we interface with the public how people walk into this building and maybe they're like, well, how do I know what's going on? And like if um, they just get, you know, there's just a one little calendar or they have to have the Chronicle with them or like where is all the information? How do you sign up for something that's a month from now? Can we do some things about systems so that it doesn't, it's not always a line at the front desk for everyone to ask a question, but that they can actually access that information easily. Or like at the Y, take a menu for all the fitness classes and put it on their fridge as a reminder that they want to go to fitness classes. You know, like 
I think that like the rec department's got this down, the Y's got this down, like there's no reason why we can't do this pretty quickly, but we really want your input. Um, One other thing uh, that was going to be addressed uh, previously is the information kiosks that we have. Yeah. They're spread all over the place, the information, if you want to know what the bus schedule is, you've got to ask somebody with the kiosk to have it. Yeah. So we're going to put it in one place and I don't think that's going to be where Is that part going to be also part of the study you're going to do? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. That's, yeah, there's, if there's too much information, nobody sees anything. It's yeah. just sort of, so yeah, we're really looking at all of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's good. And, we're, and we are sending out the constant contact. Are you all on that? Are you all getting that? Mm -hmm. So there are weekly emails that say, next, remember next week there's this class and this. Okay, so we should get you all on that. Um, it's great because it's really, people are responding and RSVPing to an email and saying, please sign me up for that or I'm coming or I'm coming and my spouse is coming. Or um, We got 112 RSVPs for the ice cream social because of the constant contact. It goes out to 1,400 people. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing that we are finding though, and this is something you could probably help us with too, is that the people who are tech savvy are the winners in terms of the signups, because mm -hmm. they get yeah, first dibs. And then the, so mm -hmm. we're trying to think like, do we have paper sign up a week before we release it through mm -hmm. the internet? Because the people who don't are tech savvy might not hear about it as fast. Oh, for sure. So we're kind of we're we're dealing with different you know different demographics, different target mm -hmm. market yeah. people. You know, yeah. like um, so it's these not are not even the tech savvy. I've had a few people come in this week who don't have a computer. Yes, right. and I directed right. them to the computer room, and luckily Mateo was in there, and he I told him could you kind of get him started. Yeah, and he was helping. Them. Right, and that that can be a really <laughs> steep curve for some people, and for some people it's not. But for me. <laughs> but if you know if people can you know they can respond to an email and RSVP and they're on the list and then all the people who want to go to that fancy silk scarf painting class don't get in I mean they're really upset they're, yes. they're really upset and so but that also tells me that we need to have a lot more programming around arts and things that people are really excited when something like that happens that means we need to do a lot more of it um, so. One other uh, thought I uh, had was previously we had a policy where Northampton residents came first mm -hmm. and out of town didn't. Mm -hmm. I understand in a recent card making class that didn't occur because it was online and several people who weren't online, by the time they got the sheet on the front desk, it was filled. So it's, it's and so that was a really hard to, yeah. I mean, I talked to the rec department about this because they they require that at least 70% of, of, of a you know, to get the resident rate mm -hmm. of a, a team, like a soccer team, they they have to give the roster with all the addresses to prove. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like it's but it's a lot of work. Class. But online, you, when you oh. sign up for a they class, do you have to use your scan card there number? There are some things you sign up for in North Carolina. Okay, we'll go first. No. Oh. No. How do they do it? Because uh, I was going to say it, it would be interesting because I think in, a, in the past we have set a certain amount of time for Northampton residents only to sign up. Mm -hmm. And then if it's not full, say three weeks, we, two weeks of Northampton mm -hmm. residents yeah. last How week we out of town. But so online, we, yeah. uh, there should be a way to... Well, through constant contact, we'd have to have a resident group and a non-resident group. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really think we just have a, have to have a lot more programming. And if we still have problems... No. Um, I mean, this is just something that was brought up to me no, as a board I member. Well, there are some things mm -hmm. that are first Northampton and then later the, the other people can sign up for. Right, and we're, we're also trying to do more of, um, like if someone calls for a shine appointment, one of the tools we're developing is, one of, one of the tools we're trying to implement is that the, the receptionists are asking um, yes, we do have shine counselors here, and what town are you, do you live in? Yeah. Because uh, this happened a lot in Williamsburg, too, is that you know people from Northampton might be calling Williamsburg for a shine appointment and vice versa, and um, it, we want to say, you know what, some things are just for Northampton residents because we don't have the capacity. Right. Um, 
And, and that's why we charge a little bit more for non-residents because we need, you know, taxpayers are paying for yeah. this and we don't want taxpayers being stressed by serving other places that that we don't get enough funding to do what we need to do. It's we like have that to I guess, but we can't spread it all over the place. Yeah, but it's it's also really hard to police that. Yes. And, and so we, we have to be realistic. You know, um, just I, I always say like, uh, if we're, our statistics aren't correct, I'm not going to spend more energy trying to make our statistics correct and 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 not serve people. <laughs> you know, like we're going to prioritize the services to people, and if our numbers are off, that doesn't hurt. That doesn't hurt people yeah. as much as just not serving them well. So, I think that um, we have to we have to weigh the yeah yeah. Okay something to work on. Couldn't yeah. there be a button put on the, the response that says resident, non-resident too? If anybody that's tech savvy might be able to set that. Well, it's, a, it's just, uh, no. it's also just no, email. it's an email. Yeah. It's an yeah, email and then email. right now until we have online registration, um, okay. which Kim and I are looking that would be into. Oh, way it's, to do it. it's not an electronic form, it's oh, not. It's not. Oh, so you got to keep count of all these things. Yeah. So they basically just they're just it. RSVPing to, in an email yeah. saying please sign me up and then we have a staff person entering them in. Oh, yeah. There are well, there's a lot of redundancy and we're we're working on looking yeah. at that stuff too. You mentioned that you've become aware that there are a large number of people who are seniors in Northampton people who discover a class but it's filled. Mm -hmm. How do they learn about it in the first place if they're not tech It was a chronicle that they put it in. There's a lot of non-board of Northampton mm -hmm. members here. A lot of people talk. Oh, yes. A lot of people who see cars from out of town. Mm -hmm. But uh, so no, this woman found out in the Chronicle and then yeah. came in to sign up for it. And the sign-up sheet didn't get there until it had been filled. And then, you know, that just, we're starting out with essentially online registration, sort of. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a gap that didn't, it fell down the wrong way. But they did make another class. And this woman didn't get into it, so it was solved. Yeah. And but I say, you know, we need to work on that resident, non-resident business. But, I, I, but yes. that's just got to come back. But I, I think that the the reaction is partly because people are really hungry for our creative classes, and we haven't oh, had them. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So we okay. we will be working on that. And, um, and they'll cost a lot. That's the other thing. They there don't, are a lot of classes around here, but they cost a lot of money. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And, In town, and mean, these might oh, yeah. cost something but those particular ones that were offered were sponsored by care one and so um you know i'm, I'm hitting up all the nursing homes um they all want to they all want to make friends so especially the population we have well yeah but i'm telling them they can do customers. it in certain ways yep. and yeah. and they I said bring flowers yep. teach classes but we won't do a hard sale you can't have no hard sales here yeah. Well, they have the, the ice cream social, so they donate the ice cream, they put their sign up and say, this is, yeah. this is from CARE 1, but that's it. Yeah. Right. But that's fine, and they will do that, apparently. Yeah, no, it's good. So. Um, do we have any big things coming up, any dinners or any? So the grand opening, which I sent you the email, um, I think the first one went out was wrong. <laughs> So it's the 20th. It's not Tuesday the 18th. It's the 20th next Thursday. Thursday. Um, and um, noon to one. And um, yeah. Is he, he going to expand his hours? Noon to one. Beyond that? Yeah, yeah like um, well, we're, 11.30 to one. Uh, well, we'll see. But I, I think um, we've been doing fine so far. And if we get too busy, my thought is that we'll spill over into the, the great room. Um, I, I really want to build programming around the meal and I want community to build and that's you know I think that when people share a meal together um, and it's it's in a condensed time that it, it might support that more but it's also we'll see I mean if we're just beyond what we can handle in an hour we will do that mm -hmm. um, but we'll you know we'll be expanding we'll be doing a lot more programming um, like right after lunch, before lunch, right after lunch, um, so that you know there's you know you can come and have a meal and socialize and then have some kind of entertainment or mm -hmm. so. So it's the twentieth Thursday, the twentieth Thursday, the twentieth. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mm -hmm. well, Bistro, Bistro's only been open for a couple of days, I and mean, a couple of times, so. Twice. Yes. Yeah, twice, so I mean, that's a, it's a work in progress, shall we say. Yeah, no, but it's been a good response, so. Yes. I had lunch here today, it was very crowded. Okay, anything else before we adjourn? I just have two things. One, um, it would be very helpful, I don't know if it's you, Linda, or somebody else, uh, um, I can't see all the name tags, and there's a lot of new people, so I'm going to learn people, but it would be very helpful to have a list of board members. We you know, I brought that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. <coughs> well, you, know, you know, and then people who have different addresses, and then and I just thought, right. if Does we it could look just, like this? Uh, there was a couple there. Thank you very much. Yeah, right here. Because it's I thought. Okay, everybody and on And then um, yeah. the second oh. thing was, I mean, partly I, I, I for parking here, yeah. did you yeah, send a, an email to uh, Pam? I mean, it's only been a weekend, I was out of town. I get a message from Pam saying, tell the election workers to park at the Gazette. Well, it was too late for me to get a hold of them. And if I'm just thinking for the November election. The time is 4.45 and the gym is now closed. Oh, okay. The will be closed. And it was just an unusual, so maybe it's to coordinate between you and Pam about. No, I think you told you told her that, right? We wanted the election workers to park at the Gazette, but she didn't yeah. get that message to you. Yeah, well, I oh. got it like yeah. uh, Labor Day. Yeah. I mean, it's a weird yeah. day because the election yeah. was on Labor Day, you know. Right, right. And, and some of my co-workers are like 90, so I mean like... Well, so so what I, I discussed with the mayor recently after that election was that I really think that it makes sense actually to close and not have programming going on here. So so um, so people, if you wouldn't like to be sure, or not to be sure, but the top cap would be open and stuff like that in ways to make money. Sometimes people come in. Well, not necessarily. I'm just saying that when people are trying to come to programming and people are trying to vote. Yeah, that's I think it might make sense to not have programming going on mm -hmm. and for us to do some staff training and um, kind of like the school. Yeah, that's what the school does. Well, yeah, except the okay. schools were all open because yeah. it was the first day of school, the first day of kindergarten. So citywide, it was like totally. Yeah. Yeah. And there were all these writing um, candidates and 40% so, yeah. so we haven't adjourned yet. What happened to the parking at the Deuce? I mean, that's the thing. There was going to be signage. There was going to be parking across the street. Whatever happened? For what? The For overflow parking. Yeah. There was supposed to be a sign going up, yeah. but you can park at the at the World I don't know. Club. Yeah. So, but I don't know if they used to do it because, um, but I don't know if we have an agreement with them. We, I understand we did have. I know. I thought we had come to an agreement. We were waiting on getting a sign. Oh. So that people that couldn't park here would know where to go. Yeah. Knew that. So that might have been being discussed before I got here. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. But okay. I thought it was decided, my, agreed upon, and we were waiting for a sign. Yeah. My my current understanding is is that that's typically an option to use their parking lot. But what I've been doing is calling them ahead of time, right before each event, just to make sure that that's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I didn't hear anything about a sign. We can but the check out sign that, is for the people I, coming in. Yeah. They see a yeah, full I parking lot. Where are they going to go? Well, right. basically, my suggestion there. was because I had to get the constable to go out because people were leaving their cars in the middle of the road, yeah, yeah. walking away. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion, I guess, really is perhaps you and Pam and the mayor can get together about, on election day, what would work best for you. The second thing was, um, and I didn't get an answer, because um, I couldn't, but I was like, does the air conditioning go off at five? It was 90, so I mean, poor Ryan Road people, I mean, they were in the gym with no air conditioning. I'd come out into the senior center, it was so hot in here, but the election was set at a different temperature. Then I was told the IT department sets the temperature. Mm -hmm. So another suggestion mm -hmm. is maybe, So that's however that yeah. works. I mean, this is none of my business, but I just- No, it is. Um, so, Central so, services does set the engine control the whole thing. So, so the, the director of Central Services was on vacation. Uh, um, <laughs> and you know, so these things happen, but um, yes, we need to plan ahead better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was a crazy election, and just yeah. the way the date worked and everything else. Right. And the schools never got put it on their calendar, which is why the schools were all in session. Yep. And oh, goodness. and first day of kindergarten. Oh. And where are the voting? You know, all these parents with their kinder, you know, kindergartners, oh. and all That's of these voters. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So anyway, I don't know, because so I'm, I'm just thinking November's coming up and then it'll probably be here, but. Well, so yeah, I was like, like freezing there. <laughs> I was suggesting that we might maybe plan to not have programming. Yeah. Um, Still have had the temperature, okay. <laughs> okay. Then the last thing was, some um, we had talked about or seamstress or programming or something, is that still? You're going to try to check, oh, in terms of somebody to do many. That used many. to be that, and that yeah. Yeah, I don't know, had there been? Oh, you need some clothes. I need clothes. <laughs> we, we, uh, we do it. it. Was there a charge for that? I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I know we have brought up before. So, so our programming staff person left. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I get it. <laughs> it's all in the works. Is you? I hear it. Oh, we so, have a lady here. We have a lady here. She did that. And you paid her for the And you paid her. She just did it. Uh, and, you know, yeah, no, we talked. I just. It no, wasn't part of our program. Okay. 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 Let's go to Michael before we. Well, two things. One in response to that. I've been working with some of the refugees, essentially from the Congo, who've been settling in the city. You may have read about them. One of them, uh, Sudi Jumapili, a very talented tailor mm -hmm. and he does that kind of thing and I suspect um, he'd be open to work okay. I've seen some of the things that he's made gorgeous shirts and he does do them in them he has his own machine um, and these are people who've just been recently settled in Northampton and my guess is again he'd be very open to it maybe work. once I get the program director you can send that information to sure. the program director. <laughs> Well, so and there, there are things around um, contractors and all that kind of stuff. So what we can do is if someone's doing that in the community or if he opens, you know, a shop or something, like, we can certainly refer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he just needs a name and an address to show up in his pile. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Which is getting bigger yeah. as they rip things and tear things. Uh, all right. Second thing, my last thing is this. Uh, understand that we're going to spend some time at our next meeting talking about the issues that were raised in terms of who really should be using this facility, what kinds of policy stance should we have, and that makes sense. And I understand and support the notion that this is a place for seniors. Our work is to see that seniors are served. I'd like for us to have a slightly generous definition of what that means because this is really thinking about what you raised. If I had a meeting set with friends and my grandchild was visiting and it was a time to bring them in, to me that's serving that senior in an important way. I wouldn't want to have a completely open policy, but I'd like for us to think about the things that might be exceptions. For example, two that I've thought about. I have friends who are 55, 56, and they can come, but their spouses are not 55. Would we not allow them to bring a spouse to the kinds of events where other people bring spouses? Would we say to them, no, she can't come, or he can't come? Mm -hmm. The other thing is, I know grandparents, as probably many of you do, who are the basic caregivers. Mm -hmm. And if we have an evening program and the grandparent has to bring the kid because they can't leave the kid at home, what do we say? Do we say? Well, there, are parent, there are seniors here who don't want kids in the building as well. So they are gonna have a say as well. Mm -hmm. And that's why you know, we might have a caregiver support group for grandparents raising grandchildren and we provide childcare at that time, but we don't have children in the building all the time. Okay. And we may say it's just for that program. Um, and we may say this, we having this grandparent, you know, yeah. um, you know during kind of thing I want school to break. You and us to think about mm -hmm. that there may be times when we're serving seniors, but not opening the place up as a community center. And again, just thinking about yeah. your suggestion. Yeah, but like the end of heart, if they have the rehearsal, I'm sure a lot of the family members, I mean, that's something just... But they don't want that. They don't want any, any of their family members to kind of come. And sometimes family members have to bring the, the chorus members to the... To no, what I'm saying is, well, so if it's a caregiver, that mm -hmm. person is welcome to yeah. come okay. and family. Yeah. Um, we are going to have programming that meets these needs, but our primary programming is for seniors. No, nobody argues about that. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's just okay. at the door. 
like at the door that you have you have to say, I'm sorry you can't come in because that person is a you know, like Well you have to be a member. That's one way that we make sure that we know who's in the building. I mean I do think it's a really I I, I, I do think we're going like and that but I do think that the whole thing is like next time. The other thing is just I don't know like because I'm new, I don't know if I ever saw the mission statement. Did I? It's in the chronicle. It's in the yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm not suggesting it would be open as a community. No, I'm I saying agree. think We're about the times. We might say, all right, you need advance notification and it has to be you're bringing the family. Yeah, we're, I don't we'll, know be, what we'd say. we'll be doing that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely be doing those things. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. I have a question. When you bring your grandchild to a meeting, no matter how old they are, who's going to watch them? Because I have been here mm -hmm. and these kids destroy this place. I mean, I've seen people just, they go off and they just leave their kids. And they they say, read a magazine. Well, those aren't kids' magazines. There's nothing for a child to do here, nothing. Right, well, when we've had rentals going on or during election, for instance, we had people wandering into the gym, right. checking everything out. Basically what happens is that the, the things that people rely on getting met here and the culture that they rely on being sort of more predictable and comfortable is disrupted. And so when I've done tons of intergenerational programming, when I came here and I even mentioned that I might be doing some of that, there was a lot of upheaval and, and fear. And then when I got here, I realized that it was, it was just mayhem here. That everything and everyone was in this building, and um, I'm just trying to to kind of concentrate in in a thought in a very thoughtful and planned way the way we do things so that it's clear because because then if we have someone who brings their daughter to the ice cream social and another person who was told yeah, that too. they can't no, come, it's it, it's then people are upset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want to say, this is the day that you bring your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Please is, bring them. What you're talking about is where are the lines drawn yeah. and where are the Let's exceptions? The and then the people and who don't have kids they, around, they just don't come that how are they to that program. And a lot of times people say, well, that doesn't seem fair. Yeah. Well, it's not about fair. fairness. It's about. So it's never going to be fair because everybody has their own version right. of what okay. they want. And some people don't want kids and some right. here and some people do. And so we're going going to serve everyone with what they want, but we have to do it in a way that works yeah. for And then it's clear for everybody. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, I'm asking is we think about what No, and I, I like the way you yeah. thoughtfully yeah. did that. I think we have to do that is people who bring a child in here, we have to make sure they are noted and they are noted that they are responsible for that child's behavior. What are the There's an analysis. Yeah. We don't allow okay. dogs okay. to be yeah. in the yeah. 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 code of conduct as they serve dogs. They have to be in the code of conduct. So if a dog came in, they are adjourned.